The original design for this sign was 8 by 10. I'm using a center point as my XY0 position, so I decided to make the sign just a little bit bigger. I wanted to have just a little bit larger border around the outside of the sign. So instead of the 8 by 10, I decided to cut this sign 8.5 by 10.5. The purpose of this sign is to be able to make it easier for the FedEx and the UPS drivers. Typically, they'll take a box, climb the stairs about half the way, and toss it the rest of the distance. Now, not all the drivers don't do that, but some of them do. And they really don't need to toss the boxes the last half of the stair climb and make it land on the porch. It's much easier for them, because I know how hard they work, just to be able to put the package underneath the porch and be on their way. So here's the sign piece, 8.5 by 10.5. Okay, we're done at the table saw. I'll just shut down the central vacuum system and we'll move over to the CNC machine and the computer. Now this sign is going to be created with a V-bit, 90 degrees, and I'm using the VCAR Pro software to be able to do this. Once I have this tool pass saved, I'll just load this into the computer and be able to use the Open Builds controller to be able to run the CNC machine. Now this sign is just very simple. It's just simply text put onto this material and I put just a little border around it to make it a little bit nicer. I'm going to reset the preview. We'll select review all of the tool paths and you can see and get a real good idea of what this sign is going to look like. Before I put the Aura Mask 813 onto this PVC, I want to give it a good cleaning. It's been sitting in the uh, wood rack now for quite a while and it's got quite a bit of dust on it. Plus, just running it through the table saw, there's bits and pieces of the PVC still on this. And once this all clean, just give it just a few minutes to dry and we'll be ready to put the Aura Mask 813 onto this quarter inch PVC. This masking works extremely well and I've used it now for quite a few years. I want to just get a rough measurement and cut it just a little bit larger than the PVC material itself. It just makes it so much easier to be able to put this material onto the PVC if it's a little bit oversized. Once I have it on there, then I'm just going to take a knife and cut off the excess. Before putting the PVC board onto the CNC machine, I'm going to change out the bit. Currently I have an eighth inch bit into the uh, CNC machine. I need to change this to the 90 degree V bit. I only need one bit to be able to create this sign and that's that 90 degree V bit. This is a collet that I have that's set up for the eighth inch bits that I use on the CNC machines. Now I have these set up separately. The one on the right is for the quarter inch. This makes changing the bits much, much easier to be able to have the dedicated collets for the different bits. This makes changing the bits much, much easier and faster because I have a separate collet for each size of the bits that I have, whether it be an eighth inch or a quarter inch shaft. Once I have it hand tightened on, I'll just take the wrenches and tighten it about another quarter of a turn. That's really all you need. You don't want to over tighten the bit into the uh, spindle. Now it's time to mount this to the CNC machine and I'm using the center point to be able to have my XY0 home position. It's easier to go ahead and mark that center now before putting this onto the CNC machine. It's time to move the gantry out of the way to be able to have easier access to the waste board. I'm going to be using the glue and tape method to be able to hold this project down. Two pieces of tape is all that's necessary to hold this. I'm not cutting all the way through, so there's no loose parts that I need to worry about capturing. Therefore, two pieces, one at the top and one at the bottom, is plenty of the holding power to be able to keep this project in place. One of the problems that people often have is how to align the two pieces of the tape. The tape that's going to be on to the project and the two pieces of the tape now that have to be on the waste board. What I do is set my project board off to the side and that gives me the perfect alignment. But now I can take the tape onto the waste board exactly in line with the tape that's on the project board. 
and that gives me the perfect alignment. There's no reason for a tape measure and there's no reason to be able to have it misaligned. I'm using the Starbond Medium CA glue to be able to put this project on along with the accelerator. That will make it where it'll stick virtually immediately. Now this bottle of the CA glue is almost empty. So I'm going to see if I can get the last few drops of the glue out of this bottle. It does not need much. You can just see the few little drops dripping onto the tape and that's plenty of glue. And this is going to hold extremely well. And this bottle is just about empty. I think this one's ready for the trash can. But now I'm going to take the accelerator and spray it onto the project board itself. And it doesn't take a lot of the spray. Just a light spray on each piece of the tape and I'm ready to be able to position it and put it onto the waste board. I'm holding it just a little bit off of the waste board to get it aligned. Once I have the alignment correct, I'll just drop it down onto the tape and push it in position. Hold it there for just a few seconds and it's ready to go. The accelerator works fantastic. The Starbond CA glue works extremely well. And this project now is ready to carve. And don't forget, in the description below, I do have a discount code that you can use to be able to purchase the Starbond glue. With the G code loaded into the computer, into my Open Builds controller, I can hit send and I'm ready to carve. And it's starting right at that center point and it's going to carve out this sign and it's not going to take but about roughly 15 minutes to be able to carve. The Open Build controller software is my go-to software that I use on the various CNC machines that I have, whether it's the Fox Alien Vasco, as I'm using now, or if it's the CNC for Newbie New Carve. This is a great software to be able to use. And the best thing about it is this is a free software. Anyone can download this software and use it on your CNC machine. Now one thing I do want to say is I do use on occasion the Universal G-Code Sender and I will use on my X-Carve Easel because I know there's quite a few of you out there that use these different softwares and I'd like to be able to have a variety to be able to make sure that I cover the topics no matter what system that you're using and what programs that you're using. This PVC material cuts like butter and it makes some beautiful crisp lines. The Aura Mask 813, you can see it's cutting perfectly and this is going to allow me to use the spray paint and get a beautiful sign. All the letters are now cut and it's cutting out this border. It's a look at how crisp and sharp that is. That is just absolutely beautiful. This is really fun to watch. I actually like watching the CNC do this PVC even more so than I do when I'm using wood or other materials. At this point, it's reversing direction and it's doing the final pass on the cutout for this border. Now that it's finished, the machine will raise up on the Z-axis, turn the spindle off, and remove back to that home center position. To be able to remove this, I do use a putty knife. That tape really holds. You can see that it did not move a single bit. Now with this off of the waste board, it's time to do some light cleaning and I typically use a toothbrush and brush off the little uh, pieces of the PVC. From there, it'll be just about ready to paint. Now that the sign's finished and looks good and I'm ready to be able to paint it, last step I need to do is protect these edges. I really don't want the overspray to get on these edges. And to do that, I just take some of this blue tape and I'm just going to mask off those edges. Easiest way to do it is just to roll out a length of it, put it down on the table, and then just simply put that right there, rotate that around, And you notice, 
I'm not putting this on the center. I don't need it to come way over this masking. And fold this piece down. And then for the last piece, just roll that over and then tear it off. And then just seal all this down. It doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to cover those edges. Now I'll take this outside and I'm going to spray paint it. Uh, the edges are nice and protected. For this sign today, I'm using a Krylon Color Max. And this is the paint and primer. And I'm using a Hunter Green to be able to paint these letters. This is actually the same paint that I had used several years ago to paint the shutters on the front of the house. So that way this will all match. So even though I'm spraying outside, I still wear this mask whenever I'm spraying. Typically when I spray paint, I lay the project onto the cardboard and then spray it right over that trash can. But this can of paint is almost empty, so it was much easier to be able to just grab the rubber glove hold the sign up vertical, and then spray the letters. And that worked out real well. And I can get that last little bit of paint out of this can. Well, for about the last hour now, the paint's been drying outside. And with this heat, it's dry, and it's ready to fur the most fun part of all, being able to pull this masking off and reveal the sign. This is the part that I really enjoy, to be able to see just how well this masking worked and how pretty this sign is going to look. It is sharp and it is crisp and it looks fantastic and I love being able to pull this off to be able to reveal it. Now to get this started, sometimes you have to use a little knife or a tool to be able to just lift the edge of that masking off and then you can peel off usually a pretty good hunk. But in my case, it ended up tearing in numerous places, but that's okay. It's just a matter of lifting up another little section and keep going. In a matter of just about, oh, 10 minutes or so, we'll have all of this masking off and be able to take a look at this sign. Well, the bulk of the masking is all off and it's now time to get to these little small pieces. I use a little art tool that has a pointed end on it, but it's not sharp as a blade. And that allows me to be able to get underneath the masking without damaging the PVC and lift up those little small pieces. You can see how I catch that edge and be able to lift it just enough so I can just lift off that little piece of masking and reveal a nice clean looking letter. This is the last portion of that enter P and now this sign is finished and you look at it. That looks absolutely fantastic. Time to get it mounted outside and to be able to do so, we just looked and found a good suitable spot, put in the first screw and then I grabbed the level and put it on there because I wanted that sign level. It's no good having a crooked sign. Once I had it exactly where I wanted it, I screwed in the bottom screw. So hopefully this will let all of the UPS, FedEx, and the other different delivery drivers know that they can leave the packages underneath the porch. So I appreciate you watching this video today. And I hope you was able to learn a few things. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye-bye. And I hope you take the opportunity to subscribe.